This is Peter Inklinder with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We are in the studios of Metro East Community Media to talk with candidates running in the November 2018 general election. We have invited all candidates who filed for this race. There are many reasons during busy campaign seasons for candidates accepting or being unable to appear. With me today is Janelle Bynum, running for State Representative 51st District, who was able to accept our invitation. We are sorry that one of the candidates in this race, Lori Chavez de Reamer, has been unable to accept our invitation. We urge voters to, vid the, to visit the League of Women Voters of Oregon website and to use the League's vote411.org site to, for comprehensive coverage where candidates may also choose to include more information, including their own YouTube videos. So Janelle, what is your top priority and how will you accomplish it? Well, thank you, Peter. Um, first of all, it's such an honor to be able to represent House District 51 and all of the families of East Portland, Damascus, Gresham, Boring, North Clackamas, and Happy Valley. Um, my first priority, number one, um, before all else, is making sure that our children get a quality education. I have four children, and two of them are in the North Clackamas schools, and so I believe that education um, is the route for uh, families to reach the highest level of opportunity as possible. And I think, you know, school funding, um, high school uh, graduation, um, career tech ed, uh, community college investments, all of those are, are priorities for me. All right. What steps will you take to ensure more Oregonians are qualified and hired for Oregon jobs? Well, the, the first thing is to be um, an attractive state to have jobs um, grow in. So making sure that our infrastructure is um, appropriate. So making sure we have the um, the streets, the power, the um, electronic infrastructure, so, so that we're an attractive market. Um, the second is, again, investing in our schools to make sure our kids are, are and our um, adults who return um, to school are prepared so they have the soft skills, you know, the hello, hi, you know, how can I help you? Um, oh, I'm sorry, you know, you're having a tough time with that. Let me, you know, let me help you. Um, having the math and science skills that they need um, if we're going to invest in like clean energy jobs. Um, also making sure that um, we have a tax environment that um, is conducive um, to, to uh, companies wanting to invest in the state. So all of those um, make an environment that is um, ripe for investment. And then when you have the people that are ready, that are trained um, to go into those jobs, then you get a perfect match. Um, Oregon is what they call God's country. And so, you know, a lot of companies want to be here. A lot of companies want to stay here. But we have to make sure that we have people who are well-trained um, and ready to work um, in order to, to make everything work together. How can the le legislature provide stable, adequate, and long-term funding for public education? So I think um, in terms of providing the stable funding, one of the things that um, the legislature just completed was the joint um, uh, task force um, in the interim for student success. And they went all around the state um, and listened to what teachers, parents, students, educators, business owners um, had to say about the educational environment in their communities. And I um, would love to be at the table um, when we go back in session to hear the debrief on that, um, to hear what the, the students were saying, what, what they really needed. And so from that framework, listening to the outcomes of that, I think that we can uh, draw up a, a better system of how we fund it. I know that uh, Business Oregon, um, I'm sorry, the Oregon Business Council has said that they are willing to step up and make investments um, for you know jobs of the future to make sure that Oregon students are ready. So between the outcomes of the the um, Student Success Committee, um, between the outcomes of the um, testimonies in the education committees, um, and then the inclusion of business and community, I think we'll come up with better solutions than we've been coming up with now. But we definitely, um, one thing I will say is uh, my school superintendent in North Clackamas has begged for years for some level of tax reform. And I think tax reform should be done with all stakeholders, not just a few who you know, can figure out how to work the rules um, uh, to their advantage. So when you mean all stakeholders, what do you mean? 
it's property owners, it's businesses, it's uh, school districts, it's, um, you know, even, even our students. Um, you know, when you look at like the uh, community college system, you know, a lot of times we've looked at like K-12 as the only system, the educational system that we needed to invest in. But we know we need to do pre-K and we know we need to invest in our community colleges. So that's what I mean by having everyone at the table to, um, you know, to discuss what needs to happen. And, and I should mention as well, um, it's not just the community colleges in, the, in terms of higher ed, it's also our four-year universities. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. This has been the Video Voters Guide. Thank you for watching. The general election is Tuesday, November 6th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates, the ballot measures, and exercise your right to vote. <laughs>